the Mega with the 42. The 42 goes down low. The 79 oh. Oh, gets caught up in it just at the very end. The 67, though, and Nathan Stanley makes it on through free and clear heat. Paul Fordiani and Larry Dickerson having a drag race. For one last attack, getting underneath him, not quite able to make it stick, having to lift once again. Go oh, into exit of turn number four, down onto the front straight away here. Who's going to win it with the drag race? It's going to be Timothy Pope. First three and four, 751 with a hefty lead here, about a half a car like that. So one gets up into the wall with a run down. Hundred feet. It's gonna be a close one across the line. This Garrett Wells made it three wide on the far outside lane, picking up spots left and right here as everybody fighting for every single spot we go. Coming, coming across the line, white flag. So here we go. Final lap. Hello and welcome everybody into some Monday Night Racing action here with the Num Thumbs Racing League Next Gen Cup Series here tonight where our haulers didn't move an inch. We return to some action here at Talladega Super Speedway where we're going to see some high flying and some crazy speeds in these next gen cars. Will Zach Millett just continue his winning spree or will someone step on up and take away that title here tonight? Well, we're just gonna have to wait and find on out as we get this party all locked in and started here with the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star span And welcome back. As always, I have to say huge proud thank you to the sponsors of the NTRL, such as Davidson Builders, the premier custom builders out there in that northern New Jersey area. If you're looking to do a whole home remodel, put an extension on the house, or even just change out the kitchen sink, be sure to contact the professionals at Davidson Builders to help you get that project done right and get it done the first time, which also means everything gets done just a little bit quicker. So head on over to Davidson Builders and give them a contact. And thank you for sponsoring the NTRL. Of course, big thank you as well to DEP Graphics. Some phenomenal paint schemes out of that garage each and every single day. Be sure to get yourself all beautified and get some of that attention back to the race car. 
here in iRacing with a wonderful new paint scheme from DEP Graphics here today. Big thank you from SimGear Central as well. Some fantastic button boxes to help aid you in whatever sim experience you're trying to have. It could be in flight sim, could be farm sim, truck sim, iRacing sim. I mean, it's all the simulators, even the sim sims. I'm sure it'll work with that as on top of everything. So be sure to head on over to Sim Gear Central and pick yourself up a brand new button box here today. And of course, big thank you to Track Bar Media with their amazing photo and video edits of real life and sim life racing. Uh, just to, man, just, it's awesome, awesome media to look at. And uh, you know, I think they've even got some products over there for apparel and all that for some of your favorite drivers. So be sure to head on over to Track Bar Media and check out all the action. And of course, Beatles Custom Car Carriers. Big thank you to them. If you're into the uh, model cars and model trucks and all that kind of stuff, be sure to head on over and pick yourself up a customized rig. And if you are a actual you know a car carrier in real life man take a few pictures of your rig and send it over to him he'll build you your rig man it, how cool is that to have your own very miniaturized version of your rig hanging around the house it's that's that's something that's actually really really cool so be sure to head on over to beetles custom car carriers and pick yourself up a new model here today as always I am Alan Brown, and I am joined by uh, my wonderful alarm clock buddy here, Mr. Alan English, the brewmaster in general, joining me here in the booth tonight. Alan, uh, thankfully the uh, RV wasn't uh, parked too far away from the booth here today, because it, well, it didn't have to move from last night. We returned to some action here at Talladega. Yeah, my my, my pleasure, buddy. It's always... Uh to be able to call and wake you up just in case you know but uh yeah man uh talladega again this place it's uh it's a grind you know up there white knuckling it uh not being able to see what's going on in in front of the car that you're right on the bumper of uh it's just unpredictable that's what makes it so fun and uh it makes it fun to watch it's not really fun for the drivers to race here for most of them i think but uh I, I love to race the plate tracks and and uh, the challenge of it and the the luck factor and uh, it's not always good luck sometimes it's really terrible luck you know you're just going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and uh, but uh, hey that's part of it that's part of NASCAR that's part of racing so uh, looking forward to it tonight hopefully it'd be cool to see a new winner out there tonight uh, but uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see that yeah hey, we'll just have to Wait and find on now and out for that front of things as Mr. Adam Turner, our anchor management specialist, down there on pit road, ready for the action. Adam, I know it was a wicked and crazy wild night down there in the RV parking lot. You were able to talk to some of these drivers and kind of get a feel for what the feeling heading on into tonight was. Yeah, just like always at Talladega, it's it's mayhem. You know, you know. You just never know what's going to happen. You want to be very cautious early on in a race like this. We saw some of that last night. Uh, you know, any idiot can win here. That's the beauty of it, though. Even the worst driver can actually win at Talladega. And English has proven that time and time again. He's really good at these, but he's terrible at other stuff, you know? It's just kind of luck. Uh, patience is big here. And, you know more luck that's really what it is but and it does tend to get the tempers flaring so people might come down and cut your uh, nose off or do something crazy and anger occurs so that's what i like about it i'll give you the rules now brown uh here we go one fast repair which i agree with at a super speedway 65 percent fuel Three total sets of tires, 18 incident points. You get a penalty, you get another six. You'll get another penalty. There's going to be no disqualifications. Same temperature as yesterday. I guess we didn't have a front or anything move in. Track is 135, so it's slick. Ooh, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
Staying warm out there indeed as we take a look here at tonight's race information. Beautiful sunshiny skies once again from uh, Talladega and these drivers not having to deal with any rain or nighttime or anything like that. So it should be a wonderful day of racing here. Bringing us down to tonight's key to the race, but something that is different. You're going to have to be sure to line them on up. It's not going to be like the trucks that are going to be a little bit more forgiven there with the front bumpers lining up with rear bumpers. We got some curved edges going on here tonight, and uh, when uh, 1 plus 2 does not equal 7, eh, it, it gets a little rough and tumbly out there. Yeah, a little easier to uh, screw up on a, on a bump uh, with, these, uh, with these machines, but... Uh... Also a little easier to lose the draft as well. So if you get a little bit too far behind uh, the pack that you're running with, it is possible to lose lose the draft a little easier in these than than in the trucks. But uh, hopefully everybody will be able to stay up with one another and keep it tight and keep it fun. Don't lose the draft. That's key. Be close. If not in the first pack, close in the second. And that in, indeed has the drivers all up and ready here from qualifying. So let's tell everybody where their favorite driver is going to be starting here tonight with the 315. Can someone please finally tech inspect that 315 machine? He's been up from way too dang much. He's got a pole position here. Once again, he's going to have the 8 of Dylan Mad Max Bryant starting to his outside in that 8 machine. 80 of Drew Prail. I uh, saw him come aboard a couple weeks ago, and he's been making some noise out there. He's starting tonight in third. Fourth, go to the Mac Daddy. We talked to him at the end of the uh, race last night. 23 Machine going to try to find his way up that uh, leaderboard a little bit more here tonight, starting in fourth. Seven of Chris Smith Jr. gets a good uh, starting spot up there inside that top five. To his outside, it's going to be the 53 of Kevin Delia starting here tonight in uh, sixth. Seventh goes to the 31 of Mr. Scott Mildern with the 89 of Brian Rose starting right next to him there in eighth. Ninth, the 29 of Mr. Chris Elliott with the 99 of America's driver Albert Anderson starting up there inside that top 10. Yeah, the number two machine of a uh, uh, fellow Air Force maintainer, Skylar Herod, starting in 11th place. 12th place will be Tristan Cotton in the 21. The 41 of Chris Gone, Chris Gones starting in 13th place. Uh, 14th will be Gavin Ray in the three car. 13 car of Joseph Tucker will start in 15th place. Outside row number eight, Dana Shepard in the 44. 79 of Jarrett Woodard starting in 17th place. 18th right there to his outside, Alan Grote in the 14. The 18 of Chris Klein starting in 19th place. And rounding out your top 20 outside row number 10 there, Tom Barris in the double nickel. 21st, uh, number nine, Tom, Thomas Welch. Starting 22nd, Jesse Redding in the 721. 64, Joe Hoggard begins 23rd, 24th, Joe David in the 6th. 46, Nicholas Simpson. He'll start uh, in 25th position. On the grid at 26, Timothy Stubblefield, number 92, the Tennessee man. 73, Josh Kelleher begins the race 27th, 28th. 57, Russ Endicott, uh, 32, Nick Biddy starts 29th, 30th, 006, Caleb Sisk, 00 Joe, Joe Bennett starts 31st, 32nd, Henry Windham in the 48, 33 of Sean Roberts starts 33rd, that's kind of fitting, and the Assassin in the 72, John Luke Wilkie rounds it out. And that is your field here from Talladega starting off here tonight. As always, we thank you all for tuning in and watching. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Ring the notification bell so you get alerted every single time that we go live. Or maybe if we're running a little bit late uh, and you're not 100% sure what's going on, eh, we'll keep you posted on over there. And if you enjoy any of the race in action, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Here as well so that way we can continue to grow this a wonderful racing community yeah you got to hit the likes you know that button and it does like this algorithm thing you know 
We already got some folks out there uh, in the chat as well. Plus EV Racing pulling for Joe and Henry. Tate Cawthorn pulling for Tristan. Jessica Stubbefield, we all know who she's pulling for. Stubbs out there. So is Lauren. Stub Nation is out here. Strong uh, caution shots tonight, Lauren says. So watch for that. Indeed, watch for it then as the pace car peels off down and out of the way into the Geico restart zone. We go for the very first time as here we go. Green flag racing from Talladega as they all put the hammer to the floor and we are racing live, turning and burning here as we go side by side down into turns one and two. The bottom line with that 315 and the 80 getting a really good run here. You can also see the uh, 7 machine trying to filter his way on up through some of this chaos as the 8 goes bounding down the backstretch there in the middle some shuffling happened in the back side of things people just trying to find their home and find their slots meanwhile man the 80 and the 315 is this going to be a two-car runaway oh my goodness they're just continuing to drive off into the sunset here i think that uh they won't be up there for long we're gonna have some rotation going on here yeah, they'll be humbled shortly. You can't do it with just two cars. I don't, unless they did something to them, the simulator, I don't see how they could survive. But, but hey, crazy stuff happens. I look, look at uh, Albert, the 99. He's got the Folgers machine. He won in the Folgers truck last night, so I guess he's trying to bring that luck back. And that indeed he is here as the side by side action continues to uh, roll on here behind. Mill in Prail, but uh, uh, really no huge moves are happening until right now where Chris Meese Jr. with that big run, like you said, it was eventually going to come, and here it is as that he jumps up in front of the 8 machine trying to jump on board that freight train of momentum. The 31 of Scott Milner slowly filters his way on back in, uh, in close proximity to that bottom line, closing everything on up as we remain side by side. 23, Mark Collins doing a great job up on that high side. He was pushing the eight machine for all it's worth, trying to get him back on up to the front. Meanwhile, the 315 and 80 drop down. Yeah, they're Getting both. And they drop down onto the apron and then rejoin the racetrack. Thankfully, it uh, looked like everybody was being pretty patient with them here and moved up a uh, half a lane or so to give them a little extra space to try to rejoin in the middle of the corner as the uh, race in action continues. Here comes the 64, Joe Hogger trying to find uh, some magic to filter his way on up through the field. Uh, 79, Jarrett Woodard there as well, but then uh, it... I think it's who's behind Chris Klein there. That's the 80 of Prail trying to. Uh, it looked like he was maybe trying to take it uh, three wide up along the outside lane, and uh, eventually will get some momentum and get some help here from the 46 of Nick Simpson. The 18 tried to go three wide there, and the 80's doing the same thing. He's he's ready to get back up there. I guess so. Oh, as we got some beating and banging going on. Oh, goodness. The 44, Dan Shepard, stuck in the middle. Three wide here. He's got Gavin Ray and Chris Gones filtering on by either side of him here. And he's still waiting for a little bit of help to lock into that bumper up on that middle to high side. Meanwhile, the 7 of Chris Muse Jr. getting a great run from the 23 of Mac, Able to get that nose out in front, but he's going to stick with Collins here. And it uh, looks like, oh goodness, the 89 Brian Rose as well as they get a mega run. Three cars filtering on by trying to leapfrog over the 99 of America's driver here. Oh, so we got one up in the wall as the three wide action continues there too. Good. It was 80. And now double yeah, was, right on his back bumper. He was pushing a three, and I think he got a little loose there. Back on it, though. Giving some really good stiff bumps to the back end of the three, and look at the momentum they've got on that outside line. Yeah, yeah that bump trapped and actually works here. It does. With these vehicles, not with you know, certain vehicles it does not, but looks like it's working here tonight. 
Brown, you touched on it a little bit. The different shapes of these bumpers makes it a, a lot easier to upset the car that you're hitting in front of you there. I mean, that's a that's a real concern, not to mention the push the pusher aspect. Yeah, not to mention, I think these I think these cars get a little less uh, downforce over that back spoiler, so we're seeing some um, a little bit of a kind of a snake-like train make its way uh, on throughout the field as more and more drivers join that upper line just being like hey man i guess that line is uh moving its way on forward and trying to get some uh, extra spots made here as the 99 of anderson jumps up to the middle lane up in front of the uh, seven of chris muth and mark collins here trying to continue to uh, lead the charge here oh man we just got action all over the place in this field right now might wonder you know well, why can't you push somebody that's already pushing another car well you ever try to push a piece of string across a desk i mean it's just gonna wad up you know that's like trying to uh back double trailers there's too much uh uh pivot action going on there it's just gonna upset uh, all of the cars and you're gonna have a big problem why don't you tell the audience what it's like why to back a double trailer <laughs> i've never tried it Seems tough, I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that I definitely don't uh, want to be trying out there as the three wide action continues to move its way on up through the field. Man, doing a great job of pushing that 41 machine is the 80 continuing his run, trying to get back up to the front. You got. Uh, man, you got Stubbs out here just wondering what the heck's going on. He's locked in on that bottom side watching all the chaos happening in front of him and uh he's probably getting a little bit worried there Ooh, dinah tommy welch kind of slings uh down the racetrack just a little bit no contact or anything just a, a little uh, saying hi 23 of mark collins yeah i saw him go way down onto the apron sideways almost hitting the inside wall able to recover and join the track once again He's, he's got to lose some spots. Hopefully, he can stay within the draft. Uh, that, Mac had his hands full, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He held on to it. No caution shots yet there, Lauren. Might have been close there once. But keep the cap on that decanter or bottle or whatever you got there. As a uh, man, just a. I I'm. I don't know why it is but man these runs are just ebbing and flowing we've been seeing a couple of cars you know if they get that like super kind of locked in state they can actually drive and make some headways here we've got the 80 and uh looks like he's gonna get some help here with the 13 of joseph tucker down there on the bottom side and just those two are gonna pull away for a split second here before the field will manage to catch back on up to him Derek Wetch letting us know that uh, he's here a little late, but he is here tonight. So thank you for being here, Derek. Is he doing race control tonight? Uh, probably. Ooh, Albert moved up the track a little bit. It's got to be tough with three wide. I know there's space, but the cars are moving around quite a bit with that air. Oh, they're moving around, and you also got cars to changing lanes out there, like driving all, all over that K Freeway down there in Houston, just everybody fighting for whatever lane and position that they can get as I don't know. Looks like the uh, 41 machine stuck in the middle. It's going to be going for a little bit of a long ride back to the back of this main pack. We do have a little bit of some pack separation here. It's the 64 of Joe Hoggard, 53 Kevin Delia, Josh Kelleher, Tom Barish, John Luke Wilkie all in uh, this secondary pack. And then you got uh, Mark Collins, Tristan Cotton, Russ Endicott, and Zach Millett all teaming on up. And then finally, with another set of team of drivers, you got uh, Alan Grote, Joe David, Nick Biddy, Caleb Siskin, Skylar Herod, all uh, working together, trying to find their way on back up to all the chaos and all the action. And most importantly, everyone still on the lead lap, every single one of these cars. Yeah, so far so good. And they're holding 
I think we already had a caution this time uh, last night, so they're, they're doing a great job. A lot more three wide, too, in the next gen Harbor Freight machine. And doing a great job. Ooh, man, as the field quickly caught back on up to the 80 machine, he snugs up right against that bumper there of uh, Albert Anderson. And, uh, it's going to slowly make their way on back up here and so we remain three wide racing and we've been three wide racing for a solid five six laps here english yeah man tim stubfield saw what was going on right there too and got out of the gas uh, oh right nine up against the outside oh. wall Ooh, man what happened with tommy welch dropping like a stone man, it looks like he maybe got some uh like a aerodynamic shove or something up to that outside wall and then we all know that outside wall it'll just uh, keep you locked into it uh, especially if you don't want to bounce back down across the racetrack here so thankfully able to tuck back into line here behind the 89 of Brian Rose but uh, the chaos up at the front continuing to ensue uh, so that that 31 of Scott Milner having a pretty good run up here in that uh, uh, actually who am I thinking I'm seeing here the 33 dropped out of the lead and then or the leader top part and then dropped back in fell in line it's kind of that lazy Susan like you talk about Brown yeah it's just ever slowly rotating back and forth back and forth while the 44 uh, Dana Shepard up 15 spots on the day is in control of this one here right now. He's got the 13 and the 80 all tucked into line behind him with the 99 and the 8, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen for long as they slingshot their way on around the uh, 44 here. It seems like it always goes to food over there in the YouTube chat. Jessica and Lauren talking about how they can distract the staff and steal a bunch of those, uh, those uh, awesome yeast rolls that they have down there with the cinnamon butter, you know? Went to Texas Roadhouse. Are they more, stealing more, the baskets? Yeah. <laughs> Are they stealing the? Well, I think they're going the up there just the sit around and sit there and eat rolls and probably just drink water, probably. Oh no, they're not that type of people. They're probably making <laughs> having daiquiris or something with rolls. Would you like to look at the menu? No, we'll just have rolls and yeah, liquor. Rolls. <laughs> we just need rolls and booze. Keep it flowing. It's not bad though. though. They do have some nice rolls over there. Well, I got. Do they still do the sawdust on the floor and all the peanut shells? Uh, I don't. I don't think they do the peanut shells all that much uh, on the floor anymore. At least the last time I went, the floor was looking fairly clean. I've been there. Already. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Uh... Definitely a good spot, and I got a feeling some of these drivers have kind of. Maybe getting that same sentiment of like, man, if we if we just run this thing as quick as we can, we can we can get to the old roadhouse before it starts closing up. It's a 99 of Anderson tries to work some magic up on that far outside lane as oh the uh, 80 just got shuffled out. Yep, 80 drew Prail second time he's been kind of shuffled out of position. They're able to tuck back into line though, right behind the 33 of Sean Roberts and that wonderful Sharpie machine. A place to plug it back in there. If you're not, not that lucky. Get, if you're not getting turned or something, I, I mean, I think you're fine. Just shuffle in now. Yeah. It's like Brown said. It's like the Katy Freeway. You just got a pistol in one hand, cell phone in the other. You're driving with your knees. There's a beer between your legs. You got a cigarette in your mouth. That's what we're doing here. Ooh, little hit on the corner between Stubblefield and and Dana Shepard. Yeah, that was weird. Almost. Yeah, that was kind of a little tap, like a, a, a bump draft on the corner of the car. And you saw those cars get a little bit sideways, but great save there by both drivers. And Dan Shepard able to hang on. He does have the three. Gavin Ray starting to kind of try to fill in behind him here. As uh, the field slowly uh, looking like it's trying to come back together. I, uh, due to one of those checkups, we saw... Uh, little bit of the field kind of fall off the back end of it here they're about a just over a second away from the main lead pack right now uh, it's being led by the 29 of Chris Elliott I mean I don't know what's going on with these cars here in this draft package but uh, this is some of the 
strangest plate track racing I think we've seen in quite a while. And it's due to this new car. Uh, it's low down force, uh, you know, relatively mild in the horsepower department. So it's very, very draft dependent. So that's why you're seeing such big packs. And while nobody's a lap down, nobody's even half a lap down yet. We got 15 seconds between the leader and last place right now on this track. So what you're saying is garbage. I mean, pretty much single uh, filed out most of the way for the most I part. Think, I think some of that might be some prep uh, for some pit stops that might be coming here in the next few laps. Okay, well, that could make some sense. Yahtzee. Yeah, and uh, he loves that game, that dice game. I'm he really you. does, man. I mean, it is a fun, fun game, yeah. fun for the full family. And it, you know, it probably reminds him of, you know, shooting snake eyes over there in Waco, just rolling, rolling those yeah. dice over and over again. So, and see why he would, uh, why he would enjoy it here as. Uh, we went three wide for a split second. Uh, some people, oh, then the 18 bumping up to the outside lane. He's going to have a bulldog uh, trying to help him on out there in the uh, double-O machine. Seven to Chris Muth just didn't have a gap to get back in up there. No, no. Oh, damn. I thought we were about ready to go four wide as the bottom lane was wide open. Everybody was kind of pinching up the racetrack and... We we're seeing a good run come from the bottom side here as we remain three wide racing here up in this main group. Double O Joe giving the almighty push to the 18 machine, trying to get him up to the front and around the 99 of America's driver and the eight of uh, Dylan Bryant here as the racing action continues on. Here's where having a human spotter instead of the eye racing spotter will benefit you greatly we talked about this a little bit last night about where a human uh, 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 spotter can tell you where the momentum is he, right now he'd be telling Albert Anderson hey clear all around nobody's moving you got a single line of cars behind you the low side's starting to get organized you know they're three car lengths back you know and the eight's pulling back a little bit he's not right on your bumper anymore so now here comes this two cars back you got a good pusher so you know they'd be they'd be given a lot of information as opposed to you know car inside car outside car inside car outside you know that's all they're going to tell you and for all the ebbing and flowing i think we're starting to see a little bit more of a trend here we're uh, I mean, Albert, he's leading the charge, but he's sitting right there in the middle of the racetrack. I get a feeling maybe that's where these cars feel the most comfortable here, where uh, the banking is just right, and uh, they're able to get the drive off the corner, and everything's just flowing smooth for these drivers here. As we're probably closing in on some pit stops here within the next three or, three or so laps. Ooh, as everything... Get, yeah, he get, saw that run coming, and... Albert jumps on down to that bottom side right in front of that 33 machine. That's going to allow the 7 and the 8 to get a whole bunch of momentum up there, up on the uh, outside lane. Ooh, the 8 getting a little squirrely after a little bump. Yeah, that little push from uh, Chris Muth Jr. that was a little bit... I don't know if it was just wasn't perfectly straight or what, but yeah, the 8 kind of a little bit of wiggle there. Yeah, Albert moved down, saw the 33 and the 80 coming. And the eight couldn't go with him. He just didn't have room. So Albert just uh, going to the line, which is making the most sense at any given time. Right now, it's the low line. Meanwhile, this uh, this this front group is continuing to pull away here as the 721 of uh, Jesse Redding, Chris Gones, Henry Windham, Jarrett Woodard, Scott Milner, Tommy Welch, uh, Nick Simpson, uh, Chris Elliott, and Brian Rose all still trying to work well together here and uh, stay single filed and catch on up. But uh, they've been losing ground and they really haven't left that yellow line. I got a feeling if they moved up a half a lane or so, I, I think they'd find some, some more success here after watching what's going on up there at the front. They may indeed. And now you got a decision to make. And I think a lot of these guys are about to make that decision. As you see a bunch of single file here, we're at one third of the way through this race. So a lot of these guys might be thinking, 
you know, if I'm close on fuel, I might as well split it into thirds and go ahead and pit with somebody. You don't want to pit by yourself. You want to pit with somebody here. So I'm sure the radios for the teams are kind of going nuts right now. Oh, that's... You got to have a friend, even if it's your foe, you know? Got to go together. Tristan Cotton said he's coming down right now. Yeah, right here on lap 24. The question is, is he going to have many takers here with him? And, oh, it looks like it indeed as the 99 leads the way for his moment there before the 33 of Sean Roberts comes in hot down onto a pit road. And everybody makes the scatter down to their pit boxes here for the first round of green flag pit stops here from Talladega. And it looks like uh, at least the second group for the most part is going to be uh, staying out on the racetrack. Same thing with the third and the fourth group. Dylan Bryant, black flag, speeding, entering the pits. Oof. That I'll be sitting there for a while, yeah. It's not as bad as uh, some oh, other type of penalties, but yeah. Speaking of penalties, did y'all file y'all's taxes today? Because the big man's coming for it if you don't. He wants that money. That belongs to the U.S. government, not you. Kind of like these yeah. penalties. I did mine a while back, and it was depressing. And so, mm -hmm. More pit stops underway. Nine of Tommy Welch. You had a little bit of a brake lock up there, making sure he was uh, checked up in time. Oh, no, we got one spinning. He must not have paid his taxes. It may not have. Uh, it looks like that's a 34 machine getting uh, kind of pit maneuvered there with the nine of Tommy Wells trying to turn down into his pit box. And, uh, 34. I don't see a 34. Uh, it could be the. Has he got a bad number? Is... Uh, I don't know. Uh, it looks like, the, at least from my camera angle, it looks like a. 34. I could be incorrect there. Regardless, green flag pit stop still underway. You got a couple more guys coming in. Yeah, a little weird blending thing happening. Yeah. Oh, so, 72 of John Luke Wilkie going for a wild ride. A little loose down there on the apron trying to rejoin the racetrack. He's going to keep it in the grass to uh, not try to... Uh, Immediately jump back out onto the racetrack. Eventually, it does make it through the grass, and and oh, he's still fighting a, a loose car out there. So what this is going to do? This is going to spread the field out just a little bit. Still, so far, everyone still on the lead lap. Even Skyler Hare and, and and Dylan Bryant, who are near the rear. I think, I think we're gonna catch a caution or something at some point here well and i think some of these packs will start to reform uh as uh little draft groups pick up another car and another car and they'll get faster and i think some of these groups will start to reform you already got the 10 second group and the 12 second group and the two and three second group that are already still pretty close together yeah and uh... I'm even still though you got Anderson Prail and uh, Tucker working together here and they're starting to drive away a little bit from the 18 of Chris Klein 92 of Timothy Stubblefield here in this a uh, little bit of a second group it doesn't help that they're uh, kind of fighting against each other right now going now, side by side the they need to get in the line and just click off laps there's a lot of racing left to do help each it other help yourself stay in the line is that what's going to happen? Is that what these cars want? Just single file racing to get up to the pack? Yes. Is that is that better than the double file stuff that we normally see? Well, yeah. With this it, car, with this car in particular. Yeah, if they stay nose to tail and, and follow the same line and everybody's kind of on the same page with what the mission is, uh, they can go out there and click off laps and they can stay three seconds in front of the rest of these guys, I think. There's always that radical, you know, the one that's going to stab you in the back like they stab Jesus, Jesus yeah. in the back, you know, that guy or the Trojan horse, you know, he's going to destroy everybody's day. Why so can't we Judas, all just get along? Judas, Judas and the Trojan horse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're all in the same category. That guy 
was a backstabber, you know, like the original OG. But I don't know. I'm still mad at taxes. I don't. I don't know. They graciously accepted my taxes. They said on my phone, you know. Thank you, United States government, for graciously accepting. I only owe you, you know, I don't know how many thousands of dollars. Yeah, because I, I guess. I make so much money that you have to take it from me. I don't feel rich, guys. Definitely not. You know me. You've been over here. Not rich. But they want my money. Because they can have those missiles. They can have both sides of all the missile conflicts, you know? Well, we... We built the Iron Dome with the USA's money. Well... We built these rockets with USA's money, and we're going to fire them at your Iron Dome. All right, cool. Change, change. <laughs> money, money, money. Everybody's making money uh, in the Senate, just not the people. All right, Brown, I'm sorry. Let's go back to Talladega. I right, got the 64 Joe Hogger there trying to lead a uh, line of traffic to catch back on up to some of the action. You got the 41 and the uh, 721 all uh, working together here. They even snagged up a extra driver here and there with the two of Skylar Herod, who is officially a lap down now, though. Uh, we did see the eight of Dylan Bryant able to uh, rejoin his uh, teammate there in Albert Anderson uh, up at the front, although he is also a lap down right now, but uh, he's just helping out that cause in that front four car pack who continues to... I, the gap's been relatively stable, but it's continuing to uh, increase here once again as uh, 18 of Chris Klein gets a big run and loses all the help off that back bumper. It's going to be a minute before they can get everything all regathered on up as Double O Joe gets a huge run and is just going to leapfrog everybody here, and it's, it's all scattered to the wind for this chase. Ooh, the three's out in the wind a little bit. I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna refuel myself right now. Be right back. Refuel? Well, you need I to. A, I got. I need fuel. Yes. Oh, I like it. I hope you're getting fried chicken or something good. You know. Uh. This is an interesting race, Brown. Totally different than what we saw with the trucks last night. Same place, same temperature, same everything. But the cars make quite a bit of difference. As uh, Albert Anderson looked like, uh, he kind of. Got a little loose, slid out of position. Didn't see exactly what happened there for the 99 machine. He's just trying to catch right back onto that draft here with uh, Tucker Prale and that uh, Ada Dillon Bryant. It's going to be close. I got a feeling that 8 machine of Bryant is trying to drop back just a little bit, inch by inch, trying to make sure his teammate and partner uh, stays up here, up as at the front, as it looks like uh, they might be eventually joined by some more lap traffic here with the 72, uh, John Luke Wilkie. The Assassin. That's some weird racing uh, for Talladega. Just it, yeah, man, it is strange. Just, I don't, I don't just, know what's going on, but not, not in a bad way though. I'm not saying it's not bad racing. It's just different. Yeah, and I, I mean, we kind of saw it from the start with all these drivers getting a little spread out, out and. Uh, kind of finding their individual packs to run with, but especially after those uh, green flag stops had a, a penalty here and there and oh, an incident down on pit road. Russ Endicott fixing to go a lap down, telling everybody uh, he's going high. I think that's what he was saying. And it looks like that's what he did. Is um, the front uh, front three and a half are able to figure out a way to get around him here. They continue to increase their lead here. Now it's up to four and a half seconds over fourth place there. Double O Joe leading this second pack who now they're in a single file line trying to catch up. I guess y'all may have already mentioned that. No, we haven't. No, we you didn't, weren't gone that long. We were just right, trying to bad. figure it out. When we mentioned, I mentioned to Brown how this is a good race, but it's, it's strange. I would it's weird, file, yeah. You know? It's not what we see at Dago usually. Right. It's pleasantly, I'm pleasantly surprised at uh, the level 
of uh, actual racing that we're seeing and great driver saves out there. We've seen plenty of guys save wrecks out there here today. Now, I, this is fine right now, but when we get about 50 laps in, I'd like to uh, re-rack it, you know? Go back to double file. My my personal opinion, just to watch as a watcher. Yeah. Plus, CB Racing said uh, just finished a Class A race there. Highline wasn't as fast as it was before the last update. Mm. They level it out. Just they're always fiddling with stuff. Brown, yeah. I thought you were on the board up there at I Racing. You can't tell them Should what to be. do. Oh, I, they be. never listen to my suggestions, man. I, I, for years, I've been telling them, throw in a boxing simulator in the infield. No, that gets scratched out every single time, so no, that's not uh, apparently ever going to come. I'll Fix the net code. <laughs> that too. Uh, yeah. That's on the trucks bad right now. I, we it's haven't bad. seen it tonight, but... Yeah, it's, ooh, man, slicing and dicing here is... Uh, is these drivers up at the front, Drew Prail, Joseph Tucker, and Albert Anderson all kind of vying for position here. Everybody uh, trying to figure out what's going on. 57 of Russ Undercut's just kind of watching it all, being like, yeah, hey, I'm going to keep my nose out of this one for right now. So since this second pack has gotten a line and they're driving down the center of the racetrack, they've picked up over half a second on the three leaders here. And they oh, got plenty of time. They're figuring too. it out. Yep. Six cars are faster than three. As long as they run a good line and stay close together like they're doing and not be fighting each other, they're going to catch them. Yeah. Well, uh, Joseph Tucker is up 13 in the 13 machine. Hostile Intent Gaming is the, is the team name. That sounds... Oh, I like that. A little aggressive, actually. I noticed. That's the first time I noticed that team. I like it. Yes. I feel a little scared, you know. Should I well, call the authorities? Uh, hostile is a very uh, abrasive word, and I think maybe uh, he... You know, it's a little too aggressive for our society. Well, I, I also feel really bad for uh, Jessica and Lauren because no caution shots here so far. They may sure not they're... get any here tonight. Uh, probably just I'm jinxed it. I'm sure they're having their own little <laughs> fun. Let's just pretend there was a caution. Okay, got... okay. Yeah. okay, ladies, this shot. Is... No, no cautions. We'll make one up at lap 12 and lap 24 and so forth, so on. This is where you register as a driver and not a not a spectator there, Adam. So you can just take your car out there and just park it in the middle of the trial wall and see what happens. I'd love to, I'd love to do that. <laughs> BW uh, probably might, wouldn't like it so much. No, he might ban me from the whole thing. But you know what? He, sure. He'd forgive me. He's a forgiving soul. He is. It doesn't sound like he's going to forgive the government. He owes how do people like us owe the government anything? I don't We know. give our heart and soul to this country working. Uh, I know I know DW, even though he got he got run over by a forklift, too, and they're still trying to jam him. That makes me even more mad for him. Still. They should be paying him. Oh, Keep I... it America going. As they continue to uh, battle up at that front, <laughs> don't look now. Here comes Double O Joe Bennett and company flying on up that single file lane right there in the smack middle of the racetrack. Been uh, really working oh, for these drivers. In a second. Well, there we go. It's all that they beating, and banging, and dodging. Yeah, they man, they caught up almost. What was it like? Four and some four change. Four and a half seconds. Yep, oh. four and a half. Man, they're just absolutely flying up here as the front uh, front few start to go side by side. I think they saw that the run was coming. They're like, hey, man, we, we need to start blocking some of this racetrack. Otherwise, we're just all going to get completely leapfrogged here and lose a ton of positions. But uh, they're able to kind of spread things on out. as a little three wide there. It looks like uh, Chris Muth getting uh, stuck in the middle. 57 Russ Endicott. Again, lap down right now, but uh, just trying to hang on to this uh, and a little front group that's going on. 
I got an idea too, Lauren. It's called lead, lead change shots. Every time there's a lead change, take a shot. Huh? It might, uh, might be a little dangerous. Uh, da yeah. <laughs> How about just do a shot on every odd lap, you know? Oh, 41, Lord. 43, 45. No, 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 I don't, I don't condone that. That might be trouble. Left. Maybe every 20 laps or so. We only got 30 to go, so. Daniel Pochlog saying the 73, 53, and the 64 catching up now. And they're starting to slowly gather up uh, some vehicles here and uh, make another little super pack as the 41 of Chris Gones is getting chased down and eventually uh, gobbled up by this uh, 73 and 53 uh, tag team event. Well, if it if the trend holds, we should see here in about six or eight laps uh, more caution, uh, caution, more uh, green lap green lap pit stops for fuel. Yeah, that'll be nice too because you got to use some strategy here now that you back in uh, double file formation. Deborah Kelleher out there uh, pulling for Bubba. I assume that's the 73 of Josh Kelleher running in a 13th position right now. That's, that's being called here, deductive Deborah. reasoning. Good job. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. You Thanks, are buddy. a smart I, fella. I feel, I feel valuable. You are. And you know what? You mean a lot to me. <laughs> I feel loved. You are. You have plenty of love here in the booth with me and Brown. <laughs> But uh, these guys are showing each other love tonight by not destroying the cars, man. And we, I don't think we've seen one car get even slightly damaged. Maybe one hit the wall or something. But <laughs> other than that, they're clean. Yeah, and man, they've just been continuing to roll on and on here tonight from uh, Talladega. As uh, Jesse Redding trying to uh, gather up that momentum with uh, this n now secondary chase pack. And... Making some way uh, back up to the front. Chris Gones is going to drop on back down to where the 89 of Brian Rose is with the 9 of Tommy Welsh, 55 Tom Bersh, Chris Elliott, Woodard, Millet, Biddy, all inside of this group. Everyone trying to, again, work together here and uh, find, a, find a way to get some momentum and uh, make, some, uh, make some headway back up towards this front, but uh, definitely a tough tough task out there is they're about 14 seconds uh, behind where Albert Anderson is up here up at the front Joseph Tucker doing a great job pushing the 80 down there he just doesn't have enough cars behind him helping out the 33 is there of Sean Roberts but yeah, there's just more cars on the outside they're able to go faster Jessica has a question go ahead I know the answer to this one what is it? Uh, let's see. Does anyone else know what today is besides tax day? I do yeah. as well, oh. Turner. Okay. Does it involve uh, an incident in Washington, D.C.? Uh, with a, a president? No. no. Not different? Well, was well. Uh, Lincoln was killed on this day. Oh, was he really? Was he? Yeah. Yeah. The Titanic sank. Not today. What else is the other one? Ooh, it ain't getting stuck in the middle. Uh, uh, Jackie Robinson Day. Oh, today is? Okay, that's good. I love me some Jackie. Hey, that guy pretty much single-handedly <laughs> helped heal America. <laughs> look at look at Jessica Stubblefield's emojis. That ought to tell you right. That That's the movie. Besides the guy laying on the door. Or the, uh, the girl laying on the door that wouldn't let the guy up there. That's the only thing that's not on there. Today was the Titanic? Yes. Titanic. So how could there... See, that's not even... Uh, we know it's fake because it's warm right now. We wouldn't have some giant iceberg floating North around. Atlantic. Yeah, they knew what was happening. They submarined the thing or it was a bomb went oh off. Oh, my goodness. They killed the guys that opposed the Federal Reserve in that boat. There was more... Everybody else was cannon fodder. Anyway, thank you, Jesse, for that. <laughs> Do your research on it. That was awesome. Yeah. 
I like it. <laughs> the door and the skull and crossbones. <laughs> That's freaking perfect. Do you think that oh. scoundrel of a woman, uh, you know, with all the stuff she did on that boat, you think she's resting she... peacefully now? No, she threw she threw the damn purple diamond into the water and just went, uh, and threw it into the water. <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> Get into the water. Oh god! Good racing. <laughs> oh man! As this uh, large uh, group of traffic here up at the front continues to slowly uh, slip away here from Jesse Redding in that uh, kind of secondary chase pack, as uh, here we go. I think we're going to get some uh, pit stops underway in uh, just a couple of seconds. Hey, remember that. Remember that submarine that went over there and tried to check out the uh, Titanic Olympic uh, site? Do you remember that? Yeah. That was the cool, one right? Had the Xbox controller. <laughs> yes. That one. Yeah. I feel bad for what? those people. They were. Well, I think they knew something. They stuck them down there for a reason. They must have known something. Oh, Jesse. Jesse Redding, I think, going to be your first taker. The problem is he's got no one coming on down with him. He was oh. doing a lot of work trying to lead that uh, that pack back up to some of the action as he uh, comes on down pit road. So I think uh, he's just uh, just running out of fuel and wasn't going to be able to push it that one extra lap. He does have some help here. Brian Rose, Chris Goins, uh, Chris Elliott, Millet, and Biddy all coming on down into the pits. And, of course, that camera angle. Helps out uh, immensely as it's pointed directly behind the. Here, here comes boxes. a bunch more, Brown. As uh, seeing the next round of takers uh, filter their way on down to uh, Pit Road. Drew Prail, Joseph Tucker, Gavin Ray, Dana Shepard, and Timothy Stofield all coming on down into the pits. They the look clean. With a black flag. Ooh. That was a clean uh, group that came down right there with Stubblefield at the tail. Daniel Pochlog and Daniel Parent both pulling for Dana Shepard out there. All right. Thank y'all for being here. More pit stops coming. Kevin Dillia is coming in and the 33. Hello, Joe, and about 30 other drivers keying up. The There's a bunch coming down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Another round here. Another Scanner round. Scott. That's 18 to Chris Klein, 33 of Sean Roberts kind of leads this uh, final set of uh, pit stops for these lead lap drivers. 99 of Anderson coming on down into uh, pit road. He said he's out of fuel. Is he going to make it to his box, Who? Anderson? Albert. Yeah, he's oh. trying his best to coast his way on down and in there. And the teammate that came up push? Uh, well, he's he's in the, the actual pit road side of things, so he, he oh, was no. he was ghosted. He made it, I think. Oh, okay, good. But uh, yeah, Albert, one of those guys that uh, he was he was doing a lot of the heavy lifting there for a good chunk of that run, so uh, he was definitely <laughs> gonna be cutting it close on fuel as the uh, drivers rejoin the racetrack as. Everybody uh, shuffles back on around here after our second and uh, looks like a final round of pit stops has been completed. We'll return to the action here from Talladega in just a moment. But first, we have to say a huge thank you to some fantastic sponsors out there. And when we return, we will have the closing 15 or so laps here from Talladega in the Num Thumbs Racing League Next Gen Cup Series here tonight.
Pedro. As we return to the action here, 15 laps left to go, being led by the 13 of Joseph Tucker, Drew Prale, Dana Shepard, Sean Roberts, Chris Muth Jr., and uh, Double O Joe Bennett all inside the main group. Then you got Gavin Ray, Albert Anderson, Timothy Stubblefield all working together here. They're going to, looks like, try to get some help from some lap traffic to rejoin on up and try to close up that uh, almost seven second gap that the leaders have created. Then you got Joe Hoggard and Kevin Delia with some help uh, on top of it. And of course you got Josh Kelleher, Henry Windham tag teaming on up, Brian Rose, Nick Biddy, Jesse Redding, and Nick Simpson all tag teaming together. And then a, a final little uh, group with uh, Zach Millett, Chris Gones, Chris Klein, Joe David, Caleb Sisk, Tom Barish, all uh, joined on up. And after that, it's all just kind of every uh, every man for themself and some uh, a couple of tag team and options here. But the uh, time is definitely starting to run on out here for uh, any of these chase packs to really close on in. Yeah, you can see Dylan Bryant hurt terribly by that penalty started second here tonight but after a couple of problems and that's the speed and penalty he's 33rd position right now one lap down yeah that hurt oh yeah hey get a caution you get back in the game maybe you know you never know you gotta stay out here to see well, he's gonna fight these other what six guys that are on the uh also one lap down he's currently at the back of the le the cars that yeah. are one lap down so he's got a yeah. on zone right now definitely he's and, got a mission yeah you got mark collins the uh 21 of the trister tristan cotton russ endicott uh all uh marked a, a lap down same thing with uh skylar harrod d allen grote as they all try to fight for uh some positions here and hopefully get into that lucky dog spot as now with 12 laps to go things continuing to stay spread on out it's clicking on down we're almost to 10 to go man we we're gonna get this thing done in about an hour we're gonna be able to go get some ice cream and it's you know yeah Gonna have some Ice extra, cream. yeah. We're gonna have some like extra time. Well, I mean, is there gonna be liquor involved? Uh, you know, I, I'm not a Joe Biden type of ice cream guy yet. I need probably pour some liquor on top of it. I'll, <laughs> I'll have that. 
No, we need to. Ah, oh, man. I, I, I gotta get you a coffee frat, man. I think I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I might need one of those. Look, I think the Biden guy, he's been asleep for the last six hours anyway. So he probably had ice cream at like two and they tucked him in. Stuff, uh, Jessica has a couple things there in uh, English. What's she talking about? So what's everyone's perfect AC temp uh, when you go to sleep? I've recently changed mine and I've never slept better. Well, if I'm paying the bill or if I'm at a hotel, that's the key. Mine is just governed by my wife saying it's if it's too cold. She's cold natured, but yeah, I like to I get... sleep wrapped up in blankets. So I mean, I usually end up waking up sweating, and then uh, I gotta have it cold. I wish I wish I could sleep in about like in a hotel. I'll put it about sixty. Here at the house, uh, you know, sixty-seven, probably the lowest I can afford in the summertime. Maybe 68, but it's got to be pretty chilly. You should ride around 70. And a fan. You know, the fan helps, too. Oh, I love my fan. 58. Yeah, 58 not bad, Brad. I like that. Wow. Yep. Yeah, because you, you're, I think you're delaying the aging process, too, a little bit, you know, Brad? Keeping yourself. Yeah. Keeping yourself young. Oh. Did you see what Ted Williams did with his uh, his body? Frozen or something? Yeah, froze, cryogenically frozen. Anyway, go ahead, Brown. As uh, the action here up at the front continues to roll on, still single file, no sense of urgency just yet from some of these drivers. Now again, there's also some uh, lap traffic involved here in this front group, so we're gonna have to watch out to see how that plays. But the 13 and the 80 still working well together right now, but here comes the three. Chris Muth Jr., I think he recognizes that we're down to the single digits. And, uh, man, it's still um, it's trying to fight up on that outside lane. Problem is, he's doing it on his own, and it's not, uh, it's not going too great. Ted Williams is playing. Like, wake me up when somebody breaks the hitting record. and I'm Yeah, like, I think so. He... He I mean, was an angry old man. I think maybe if somebody tries to break his record, they're probably, there's probably like a provision in the thing. Hey, go ahead and clone me now, you know, well, so I can come back. It might be like Demolition Man where he's going to wake up and he's not going to know how to knit and uh, he'll know Kung Fu and all this stuff well, that Wesley Snipes knew how to do. What I really think was his kids uh, saw an opportunity to like make some money. Uh, on him at the end, and that's really what happened. What if the power goes out? Do you melt? Well, I mean, you should have a generator or something. I'm not sure how that works. I mean, he was a great, not only great baseball player, he was a great American. But he was a cranky old man, I know that. Look at a Ty Cobb. Well, that guy was a little off. I wouldn't go into Ty Cobb <laughs> stuff. Yeah, he was nice. I love that movie with Tommy Lee Jones. If you ever get a chance to watch that one, it's pretty good. I think I've seen that. 90 degrees in Nashville. Almost no, 90. It's snowing in Vermont. It's snowing in Vermont. <laughs> it's warm. It's comfortably warm, but very humid in Louisiana right now. Oh, it's it's perfect. Yeah, we are about 80 during the day, 75. We're doing good. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Mid eighties. Vegetable plants are doing well. I've really been working on my garden, guys. You know, I'm gonna have to report to you, to you about that. Man, you gotta start. You gotta start canning stuff. I can help you with that. Yeah, I know you're the canning master. Can. I'm prepping. You know, I, I've I've been buying silver. You know, and doing all the things that they tell you not to do. Because yeah. they they want you to have total control over you. Now I'm trying to take back my control. Sure. Five, almost five laps, Brown. What do you think? Man, I don't know what to think because this race has been just strange all around. I'm still waiting to see some people maybe try to make some last second moves up here, up at the front, coming back down to uh, five laps left to go and. 
Uh, again, really, nobody making uh, too big of moves. We do have uh, Joe Hoggard here with uh, Delia, Stubblefield, Anderson, and Gavin Ray. They're slowly making their way back on up. The gap was almost eight seconds, and now it's back down to six and a half. So they're uh, slowly inching their way forward, but I think they're going to run out of time. Jessica Stubblefield, well, she must be rich. She bumped her uh, temperature down from 68 to 65 with two fans. Life-changing event. Well, you know, the, your, your, your carbon, uh, what do they call that in English, when you have all too much carbon footprint and they're going to tax you for it and then you're going to be put on a shame list soon? She may know. be in trouble. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're going to shame you for all the energy you use and then tax you higher. You hadn't heard of this? Yes. Oh. This, you don't want to engage in my <laughs> conversation. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it's like a carbon yes. tax. Yeah, you know? I don't know enough about it to... to well, that's what they want you to do. Oh, no, look at look here. Look at my right hand. Look at my left hand. There's a rabbit in my hat. Oh, God, I just smoked you for more taxes and more control. So the leader's, like coming, on, the leader's coming on up to uh, Jarrett Woodard and the nine of Tommy Welch here. Putting them a, another lap down with three laps left to go. That 79 machine uh, just trying to stay up there, up along the outside wall as the leader's make their way on around but goodness gracious everything still uh, it's all single file i'm i'm just it's not gonna last uh, when when are they going to break out and just go uh, playing for keeps out right here? about now it's it's happening very soon uh you're about to. to see double and triple wide here in just a minute as these guys start to say okay uh i've helped the collective now it's my time and everybody's going to come out and as Plus EV Racing says, it all comes down to this. Here we go. And yeah, I think so. And there it is, starting oh. to separate. 64 is around. And the 53. Still green. Still oh, green. Yeah. Oh, 64 down on the apron. They're trying to get it all collected back on up. There oh, is. there's a yellow. That's going to change <laughs> things dramatically. There it is. Somebody was... Oh. Angry about the caution coming out. I didn't see who that was. Let's go back. They tried to stay off the main track. They they, but, they um, did. They were just doing a whole bunch of slipping and sliding. Oh man! It's just uh, I think the front bumper of uh, Albert Anderson there just getting a little too rounded with the uh, 64's back bumper and uh since the, it was the 64 that slid back up onto the track yeah it was oh down into okay. the 53 a little bounce off the wall you can see it tried to get all all locked back on down the problem was he was also trying to avoid the penalty of sliding through the uh sliding through the pits and it, it brought him back up to the racetrack and uh thus throwing out that yellow flag but and we thought it was going to be about a, you know, three, four, maybe five car fight. Well, th this changes everything as we go into bonus time to close out here tonight. Mm. Yeah, you got two meatball flags, one for Nicholas Simpson in the 46 machine and one for the 73 of Josh Kelleher. That just means they have enough damage. They have to get it fixed. Otherwise, uh, uh, iRacing is going to stop scoring their laps. Yeah, what happened to Keller here? here? I was... Did he end up getting a... Oh! Man, they were trying to uh, avoid the cars on the uh, on the track. Goes three wide. And then uh, had a little meeting of the minds. Heavy impacts up into the outside wall. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, just trying to avoid it. And uh, Hogger did his best to stay out of the way. Didn't take much damage. I mean, he lost a lot of spots, but... And uh, I guess Albert was he pushing too hard in the corner, or uh, it was like coming was there some lift. It, I don't know. It was coming right out of the corner, 
and uh, again, you know, these aren't the trucks. The noses are just a little bit more round, and depends on where the uh, initial contact is being made. You can see here the 80. I don't, I, I don't know if uh, the 13 is maybe trying to save some fuel or something like that, but uh, it looks like the 80 is bump drafting here on the uh, pace laps. Dylan Bryant, black flag again, and uh -oh. Kevin Delia, black flag. Black flag for the 53. Oh, Rutabaga. Goodness. Not uh, not what you want to see here, especially within the uh, waning moments at, uh, at Talladega as uh, we get the field all restacked and re-racked here for some green-white checker finishes. Those two uh, black flags I just mentioned were both cleared by Derek Welch. They were those uh, passing under yellow Aranus flags that iRacing gives uh, when there's a big wreck and the caution comes out. So here we go, uh, Mr. English, as we slowly get things all uh, re-racked on up here. Uh, last night yeah. we saw for the first time in quite a while the leader who was in uh, coming out of turn number four is the one that actually won the race. Who do you think's got a shot here of picking up the win tonight? Do you think uh, Joseph Tucker's going to be able to hang on to the lead for uh, the entire green-white checker? Do you think we might see somebody like Double O Joe Bennett there in six who's up 25 spots on the day find his way up to the front? A lot of variables here. Uh, you know... Uh, uh, driver aggression being the number one variable. Uh, th these cars, um, th as draft dependent as they are and stuff, you might see some great runs come to the outside. It depends on what the line looks like. It depends on how many cars are lined up nose to tail, you know, going into three and four and coming out of four. It's going to be, you know, which line is more organized? Which line is chaotic and has guys ducking and diving out and, you know, all that chaos. So I'm not sure here. It looks like the 80's been pushing the 13, trying to help him with his gas. And the 80 and the 13 teammates here. Well, they, they may be. But anyway, like the 80 was trying to help the 13 out by pushing him around for a portion of that lap. But yeah, uh, long, uh, I guess short answer is I don't know. Uh, I mean, we're it's possible we see uh, the leader coming out of four win the race, but it depends on where the momentum is. It's it's uh, tonight's race is really throwing me for a loop on what to expect from Talladega. Yeah, and so uh, we, just, we just don't know what we're going to get here. Just to remind everybody on the rules of a green-white checker finish, we're going to head on down to uh, take the green flag and uh, get things all refired on up. If the leaders come back around and cross that start-finish line to take the white flag, uh, we will uh, re-rack and... Uh, or we won't re-rack, we'll race this one on out to the very end, but uh, if a caution flag comes out before the leader crosses that start-finish line, then we will indeed re-rack and stack it and do it all over again. And we saw it was a very close call last night. We'll have to wait and see here for tonight as the 13 and the 80 all lined on up side-by-side. Side. Dana Shepard, Chris Muth Jr., Sean Roberts, Double O Joe Bennett. Gavin Ray, Timothy Stubblefield, Jesse Redding, and Joe David all lined on up inside of this top 10 looking to pick up the win here tonight as the field enters into that trioval one more time to that Geico restart zone. And here we go. Green white checker racing here from Talladega as the 13 and the 80 get a fantastic restart. The seven of Chris Muth Jr. Hoping for some help up on that outside lane as everybody builds and builds and builds that momentum. The double O of Joe Bennett trying to get to that back bumper of the seven. Looks like he will do so. And they're going to start to try to charge on forward. 33 is trying to close the gap here with the 44 who's closing in on 
on the leaders down there on that bottom side as they run side by side down the back stretch into turns three and four and the rest of of the field starting to close on up as well here comes on that far outside lane 99 of albert aronson oh bails on out of it, it he was uh taking a ride there i think with the 721 of jesse redding trying to make their way on up as we're three wide four wide back to three wide as they enter in to that tri oval here crossing the wire we are racing this one on out gonna finish this one under racing conditions as we're three wide throughout the entirety of the field the seven of chris muth jr able to break free and clear the problem is there's three lines of traffic and he can't control them both oh it's beating and banging oh no there goes the 80 machine off for a big wild one. ride and a big one in the midst but we're still having oh. to race this one on out as the 89 of brian rose is able to filter his way on through all the chaos and look who's up there with him the 315 of zach millet who's been completely a just ghost here this entire race as they come out of turn number four it's going to be brian rose with some help but here comes the 89 or the uh, 315 of millet drag racing with the 89 and the 315 steals it at the final second to pick up the race win here tonight pure thievery right there <laughs> that's what that was but oh, good race in there it wasn't it wasn't illegal he didn't do nothing wrong it was just coming it's totally different coming out of four like that and 53 delia got third place backwards it that he did as we go ahead and take a look back at the uh gigantic wreck that uh we saw coming out of uh coming out of the back stretch here let's try to try to find it here as we that was a jump on back huge one yeah as we jump on back to the white flag and you can see it was just everybody trying to fight for position three wide even almost four wide in a couple of instances here and it was just some uh, some back and forth back and forth and then yeah it was, uh, it was the seven of muth i think wanted to tuck on down to that bottom line but wasn't quite able to do so and then uh, after that it was just uh, everybody uh with a loss of control 44 trying to avoid some some spinning traffic gets on up and it was four wide at that point there really wasn't any room to go up anywhere and it just becomes a uh just comes a complete parking lot down there on the back stretch all that tire smoke bumpers flying oh my goodness yeah. oh the eight yeah. just pinballing and goodness and then as uh, the leaders coming out of turn number four was still kind of single file. 53, Kevin Delia was looking towards the outside. Again, we we see that extra couple hundred yards after the midway point in the trial makes a difference here as a 315 battles side by side with the 89 trading a little bit of paint. 53 getting caught up with a seven of Muth. And that is how uh, those drivers uh, finish it all on up with even more wrecking uh nick simpson missing a few body parts and it looks like jesse redding able to uh avoid some of the chaos at 41 of chris Gomes there as well well there's controversy english i don't know if you're hearing all the talk no i i got up for a second to go take care of something now I'm back but uh oh joe hoggard said he ran out of fuel like that might have caused some of the stuff there they're hashing out. I mean, it, it's crazy. Uh, that you don't normally see that at the on the back stretch like that, Brown. But just no. like everything else, we don't normally see what we saw tonight. You don't see that crash on the back stretch, but it happened. And that indeed it did. As we can get some of these driver interviews up and underway, and we can start talking with the man who finished in third place, driving backwards here tonight, the 53 of Mr. Kevin Delia, finding his way on home to a podium finish. Kevin, congratulations on the uh, podium here tonight, but man, just talk about a wicked, wild, and just strange and crazy race here tonight for, I mean, 98% of this thing until that uh, that uh, caution to bring everybody all together. Things were looking... Uh, pretty spaced out yeah um there was a massive checkup 
almost a wreck early in the race and that just spread everything out i know me joe and josh were pushing as hard as we could to try to tighten everything up and i mean running out of fuel and it was burning up the engines it was not a it was not easy for most of that race and then of course me and joe getting collected in a wreck didn't help the situation but it kind of did because it brought us all together well great great finish here tonight uh moving forward uh to next week everybody's going to charlotte motor speedway and uh the end of next week's race will mark the halfway point of the regular season. Uh, after that, you know, you got five, five more races and the playoffs start. Uh, how are you and your team sitting as far as points? And uh, do you think y'all are going to have to pick up the game a little bit to kind of secure yourself a playoff spot? Or do y'all feel pretty comfortable with uh, the route y'all are taking? I mean, I, I think me and Joe are in a pretty good position. Um, that being said, there's always room. I think we need to do a little better. This is the first race. I'm actually kind of happy with my performance. Every other one's been kind of awesome. iffy. So we'll see what happens. And uh, from here on out, it's full throttle. Try to get to the end. Heck yeah, man. Uh, I love the backwards finish. There's some Talladega Night stuff there. Got your podium. Who'd you like to thank? Um, I want to thank A, you guys, Derek, for putting on this league. Uh, DEP, my painter slash team, all the guys over at DEP, they're uh, it's been fun, and uh, yeah, it's been fun. Awesome, man. Well, congratulations on the third place finish here for that 53 of Mr. Kevin Delia coming across that line and finishing on this podium, man. Congratulations, good luck next week over there at Charlotte, and good luck the rest of the season here, buddy. All right, thanks, guys. I'll take a Quick step up the podium and talk to tonight's second place finisher, Mr. Brian Rose, drag racing to the line against that 315 of Zach Millett. Brian, congratulations on the second place finish. I know it's so tough to be the leader coming out of turn number four, knowing how much extra room is left to go here at at uh, Talladega and knowing that a run's going to be coming. But man, you you fought and clawed as hard as you could. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, we uh, everybody kind of got uncoupled from the draft there at the beginning of the race, and we all kind of rode around. Uh, pit strategy with teammates is always big, so we pl that played into our hands a little bit. Had enough to go there at the end. Uh, but yeah, at Green White Checkers, what we needed, I was unsure how everything was going to line out, but uh, got this Trap Bar Media Ford hooked up with a teammate up high, and they left it open, and we just rode the wall around for a one-two. Yeah, the TBM Mustang real quick out there. And uh, y'all did what you needed to do and uh, picked up a great finish out here. Congrats on second place. Uh, next week, Charlotte's on the on the calendar, uh, the hub of NASCAR, you know, you know, kind of the kind of the standard mile and a half uh, uh, with that little quad oval angle and stuff in it. Are y'all looking forward to next week? Are y'all already kind of preparing and trying to figure out a game plan? Uh, we always, uh, especially me, I always look forward to Charlotte. It's uh, one of my favorite tracks. It's a tough track. It's it's honestly, it's hit and miss, even though it's one of my favorite tracks. Uh, depends on how the tire wear is. And uh, with these big, heavy cars, you know, uh, trying to keep it pinned to the bottom, the whole race where it's fast is uh, one thing. And then, you know, the way these cars draft and everything else, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. Hopefully we've got a big field there uh, next week and we can go out and maybe get us a, another podium. Yeah, I love Charlotte, and uh, that should be some fun. You had some fun tonight. Uh, second place, that's not too shabby right there. Who'd you like to give some uh, shout-outs to? Uh, first and foremost, uh, HBR Shops, all the teammates. Uh, definitely wouldn't have been up there without some teammate help tonight. So make sure you check out HBR Shops, TrapBarMedia.net, Popple, uh, Castle Packs Power Products, everybody who uh, supports us and uh, helps us keep doing what we're doing. Awesome, man. Well, big congratulations to the 89 and Mr. Brian Rose coming on home here tonight in second place. Man, fantastic running out there. And good luck coming up over there at Charlotte and the rest of the season here, buddy. Thank you. And with that, we take that final step on up the podium to talk to tonight's race winner and a guy that... Man, we're just going to start calling you a sandbagger anytime that you're not actually up at the front, Zach, as 
the 315 finds his way home here to victory lane once again and it, it was just a it, not your typical zach millet finding his way home to victory lane type of race i mean for the most part you were uh thankfully you know n never really going a lap down or anything but you you weren't anywhere near the front after that early checkup no we had kind of a, a nightmare night tonight we we wanted to to multi stream tonight you know we, we had twitch going and then i tried getting the tiktok thing going and and my wireless headset likes to bluetooth to anything that's turned on so the first 20 laps i couldn't hear anybody or talk to anybody and i was struggling and and uh right about when i got everything working again i was all by myself <laughs> and uh in uh, pure struggle mode so i don't know it was uh it was kind of a just hang on and pray for caution and uh i didn't think it was going to take you know 68 laps to happen but i'm glad one came out we didn't either i think us the fans the drivers everyone was kind of surprised that this that this race went almost to the whole duration before we saw the first caution come out and it was just it was it was it was surprising and it was a lot of fun to watch because you have a lot of green flag pit stopping going on. You have a lot of strategy calls going on. Uh, you know, we love watching the momentum of the lines run. And tonight it really proved that, Hey, whatever lane has the most cars is going to be the fastest. It doesn't matter if it's on the middle or the outside lane, uh, where whoever has the most cars nose to tail, uh, is going to be the fastest, and that's kind of what we saw out there, and that's kind of how the the front uh, three drivers that were running out there out front for a long time, that's how they got caught, was that you had a group of about six or eight that all stayed in line and didn't battle each other, and they caught up to the front. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just hard to to kind of guess on which lane is going to you know, have the most when it matters the most, and I don't know. You can get into a kind of a two car tandem for a little bit, but your car gets so hot so quick. It's, it's pretty tough to time it. And um, man, I'm just surprised uh, that we kind of were in the right spot at the right time there at the end. And uh, I actually got wrecked going into pit road that last stop. So I thought my race was done a couple times tonight. So it was, uh, it was running that whole last few laps there with no fast repair in the bank. And I was, I wasn't breathing. Well, uh, take a breath now. You finished. I mean, that's a that's a tough race. Any time at Talladega is so hard and just a lot of luck. But it was on your side tonight, man. Congrats. Who'd you like to give some shout outs to? I gotta give the the HBR guys a shout out tonight. It was great running with these guys, and it's nice to have good teammates. It makes races like this just a, a blast. Uh, I gotta give you guys a shout out. AAA Broadcasting for the broadcast. Uh, the NTRL, DW, all the admins, everything they do. Uh, I got to thank HBR TV, Track Bar Media, HBRShops.com, Castle Products. And uh, shoot me a follow over on, got to get used to saying this, Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube at That Is Forga. Awesome, man. Well, Zach Millett, surprise, surprise, finds his way on home in victory lane once again here from Talladega in this Num Thumbs Racing League Next Gen Cup Series event from Talladega, man. Congratulations on the race win, and good luck with the rest of the season here, buddy, but apparently you, you don't really need it. He's just that dang good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good one. With that, we... Close things on down here tonight, and yeah, boys, that was a that was a different plate track than what we we're uh, used to seeing here at uh, at Dega. I know it was like almost night and day difference from what we saw last night. Much much different. Uh, there weren't a whole ton of cautions, you know, like we normally see. It was it was a lot of good clean, uh, and, and we saw tons of three wide, and just the guys just handled it so well. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. We, we loved watching the rotations up front. So many lead changes, including the last lap, which Zach Millett, uh, with Zach Millett taking the win here, man. And it was just, uh, it was an incredible race. I, I hope all the guys go back and watch this because uh, it was a lot of fun for us in the booth as well. A uh, little bit of controversy there towards the end. Uh, uh, some folks talking about the disrespect uh, on the last lap there and, uh, we'll go back and watch some tape and, and see 
what that was about. But, you know, overall, uh, a good, for the most part, clean race. And it was a lot of fun to watch. Pleasantly surprised at a uh, at a mostly green uh, race here at Talladega. No, that was a lot of fun. Just totally different from last night. Same track, different car. No problem. A better race tonight, I think, than we had last night. That, and you know that yeah. last crash. Uh, we're racing. You know, it's the final lap. We're racing. You're a Talladega. You're always going to have the big one, and we had one. It just happened a little differently than normal. Good race. Uh, looking forward to next week. And that in indeed, as we close things on down here tonight, let's go ahead and tell everybody where their favorite driver ended up actually finishing here tonight. As the 315 of Zach Millett finds his way on home in victory at lane 89 of Brian Rose up on that second step with the 53 of Kevin Delia rounding out your podium. Then you've got the, uh, I believe that's the uh, 7 of Chris Muse Jr. finishing here tonight in fourth. Mr. Nick Simpson having a fantastic night up 20 spots finishing up inside that top five jesse redding having a good run towards the end here as well up a bunch of spots to finish in six 41 of mr chris gones the president finding his way on home here tonight in seventh you got the uh, uh drew prail machine having a good run uh saw him uh, battling up at the front uh, quite a bit here tonight able to uh find his way home here tonight in eighth Ninth goes to Mr. Uh, Mr. Tucker, able to figure out uh, that 13 machine up into that uh, top 10 with the 006 machine, Mr. Caleb Sisk, finding the final top 10 position. Yeah, the sixth machine of Joe David finishes in 11th place, up a whole bunch of spots here, about 13 spots. Tim Subfield finishes in 12th of the 92. The 99 of Albert Anderson finishes in 13th place, 14th. Nick Biddy in the 32. A lot of hard work by him to work his way up a bunch of spots here tonight. The 18 of Chris Klein will finish in 15th place. 16th, Gavin Ray in the three. The 55, Tom Barish in the double nickel, uh, finishing in 17th place. 18th, Joe Bennett, the double O. The 21, Tristan Cotton finishes in 19th place and rounded out your top 20. And 21 cars on lead lap. Pretty good. Pretty cool deal out there here tonight. Sean Roberts in the 33. Yeah, 48. Henry Windham ended up 21st. Uh, then these other guys, they weren't far behind. Just a lap down, most of them. And uh, here, here we go. The, in 22nd, 44. Dana Shepard. 64. Joe Hoggard. Have a little issue. 23rd, 24th. Jared Woodard in the 79. Skyler Haird in the 2. Finished 25th. Finishing 26th. D. Allen Grote. In the 14, number nine, Thomas Welch. He ended up uh, 27th, 28th, 31 is Scott Milner. Number 57, Russ Indicott. 29th, 30th, Mark Collins in the 23. A little different than last uh, last night. He was in the podium. Different, different vehicle, different odds, all that stuff. 29, Chris Elliott ended up 31st, 32nd, the 8th of Dylan Bryant. 73, Josh Kelleher. Finish this race two laps down and 33rd and three laps down. 72nd, uh, the 72 of John Luke Wilkie ended up in 34th. And that is your field here tonight from Talladega. As always, we thank you all for tuning in and watching and having a wonderful time out here with us because you guys are the reason why we do this and have such a good time of doing it. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you get alerted every single time that we go live. And if you enjoy any of the race and action, be sure to hit that thumbs up button so we can continue to grow this fantastic racing community. Of course, we have to say a huge thank you to the proud sponsors of the NTRL, such as Davidson Builders, DEP Graphics, Sim Gear Central, Trek Bar Media, and Beatles Custom Car Carriers. Thank you all for uh, continuing your support for the NTRLs, because without it, they wouldn't be able to put on the amazing show week in and week out that they always do. So big thank you to our sponsors. 
And with that, we close things on down for the evening, but don't you worry, we're back in action here on Wednesday night as the Vigilante Racing League takes on Texas. Gonna have a wicked fun time there. I know they need to blow off a little steam and actually go do some actual racing after their uh, mayhem over at Martinsville, so should be a uh, should be a fun one to watch getting back to the mile and a half and a little bit of the larger tracks there so it should be a fantastic time so until wednesday i'm alan brown for alan english and adam turner we are signing off we go see ya <laughs>